Hello and welcome to episode four of my Antiques Quiz here on YouTube. This is where I'm going to show you three distinctly different items and give you the chance to test your valuing skills against the expert. So let's start with item number one. It's outrageous. It shouldn't be appearing on an Antiques Quiz, but it is. How much would you pay for this? It's a Dad's Army 1976 Christmas annual. But what makes this very special, not just that it puts a smile on your face, but it's also signed by 11 cast members from Dad's Army. It makes it very special indeed. It went through auction, it was sold by Chaucer Auctions, and it had an estimate of 100 to 150 pounds. But how much do you think the final hammer price was? But I need to give you some crucial information here. So Dad's Army, the classic British comedy, ran from 1968 to 1977. And each episode could quite easily get 18 million viewers. Now that just blows out of the water all modern productions. As an example, EastEnders on a good night might get three to three and a half million high rows by row. So it was a phenomenal success this and the stars in it were super celebrities and guess what we've got 11 autographs there and for those of you that this is taking back on a nostalgic journey let me give you a few interesting bits of information i don't think you know about dad's army well i'm going to test you let me know in the comments down below did you know that dad's army was initially going to be called the fighting tigers a rubbish title actually and the head of comedy at the BBC thought so too so he himself changed it and called the show Dad's Army and it just works as Dad's Army. Arthur Lowe of course who played Captain Mannering was so concerned that this new comedy Dad's Army was going to be so common and lowbrow that he insisted get this in his contract that a clause be signed in that at no point the producers would ever ask him, Arthur Lowe, to ever appear on the show Dad's Army not wearing trousers. That, he thought, if that was in the clause in the contract, would not reduce the show to such a low brow level. And of course, they did. He signed it and he never appeared on Dad's Army, if you remember without wearing his trousers. So wonderfully eccentric, so wonderful and British. And the final thing I don't think you knew about Dad's Army was this, David Jason, he who found fame as Del Boy in Only Fools and Horses in 1968, almost bagged the role of Corporal Jones. But anyway, back to the book itself. As an annual, it's not really that exciting. They made tens, hundreds of thousands of these things. But as we know, what makes it very special are the autographs of the 11 superstars, including Arthur Lowe, Clive Dunn, Arnold Ridley, Ian Lavender. I filmed with Ian Lavender actually on the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Lovely guy, still just looks about the same age as Pike did in 1968. There's Frank Williams there, Edward Sinclair and John Laurie. Big names in their day, and to some, still big names today. So it's over to you. Chaucer's said 100 to 150 pounds, but how much do you think it really sold for? So here's 15 seconds thinking time, and I'll come back with the final hammer price. Good luck. And I'm back. Well, if you said final hammer price of £550, bang on, you're a superstar valuer. Let me know in the comments down below how well you did. So why did this ordinary annual sell for such an extraordinary amount of money? Well, one, somebody bought back that nostalgia, that sense of childhood, happy days from 1976. And now they own something, they can touch a book, a page that their superstar dad's army actors 
actually touched and they can run their finger over their autographs. It comes with full provenance so we know it's genuine. You just can't buy that today. But let's move on to item number two, something completely different and worth an awful lot of money. So get prepared to value this baby. How much would you pay for this painting? This is a very special thing indeed. Painted by Dame Laura Knight and sold by David Lay. Auctions estimated, get this, at 60 to 80 thousand pounds an important picture this but how much do you think it really sold for well before you make your mind up let me give you some crucial background information so you'd imagine at 60 to 80 thousand pounds dame laura knight is a fabulously rated artist so that goes without saying but let me give you some information about the picture itself and more in particular the sitter this is ella naper now Ella herself was also an artist mainly in jewellery and she would exhibit with Dame Laura Knight. They were great friends and Dame Laura painted Ella in the nude on several different occasions. Now this was pretty unusual painted in around 1913. It was quite outrageous to some people in the press and society for a lady artist to be painting nudes particularly of ladies but this is the height of the suffragettes and if you've seen my recent quiz I, I mentioned I showed you a suffragette brooch this is exactly the same period this is girl power sisterhood power strength women like this changed society forever this for 1913 was a very brave painting and it is terribly sought after right now so you must take all of these things into account but the icing on the cake for me with this particularly beautiful painting is this see the lady holding the picture this is caroline lay from david lay auctioneers who sold the painting now caroline is the great niece of ella naper so the circle has beautifully been closed the market loved this the buyers went crazy for this so how much do you think it finally sold for well I'm going to give you 15 seconds thinking time then I'll come back with the final hammer price good luck so my existence and nothing you could give us could put it out and I lost those old And I'm back. Well, you know that this thing was going to make a lot of money. The picture is just so current. It's a real celebration of that snapshot in time period. So if you said anywhere near hammer price of £105,000, well done. Give yourself a point and let me know in the comments down below. But listen, don't worry if you've done rubbish so far. You've got one more chance to get it right. I know you're going to get this right. This is spectacular. And if I'm honest, my favourite piece in this episode. How much would you pay for this? Estimated at three to five hundred pounds at Druitt's Auctioneers. Oh my goodness me, this is a Lalique glass car mascot, but it's much more than that. It's a Rennie Lalique car mascot, let me explain. So Rennie Lalique formed the company Lalique Glass in France in the early part of the 20th century. Now he lived until 1945. So anything made from inception of the company to his death in 1945 is signed R. Lalique. Anything post-1945 is simply signed Lalique. This Falcon car mascot is signed R. Lalique, so we know it was made pre-1945. I can tell you that the design was first penned in 1925, so this Falcon glass car mascot dates to 25 to 45, but probably closer to 25, because in the 20s and early 30s, car mascots like this were incredibly popular. Some of them even illuminated with electricity, and guess what? 
this one did when it was new, circa 1930. I mean, the motoring classes at this time had a lot of money because you needed a lot of money to run and buy a motor car and they would bling them up. Blinging cars up is nothing new. And so car mascots, they were popular from the early part of the 20th century right through, I suppose, to the beginning of the Second World War was their height. In fact, so popular that Rolls-Royce themselves were inspired, or in fact, better described as forced into making their own car mascot, the most famous car mascot on the planet, the spirit of ecstasy, because of the fashion for car mascots. Let me explain. So, in the early part of the 20th century, car mascots were flying all over the place, people adorning the, the bonnets with these flash blingy objects. Now, Rolls Royces of the early 20th century did not carry a car mascot, just a simple symbol on the radiator grill. However, the owners at Rolls Royce were so horrified, mortified and disgusted by seeing their cars being blinged up with these inappropriate and common car mascots that they decided, look, we need to make our own car mascot and provide every single new Rolls Royce with a fixed car mascot so they don't get blinged up by common people. Makes sense doesn't it? So by 1910, they had the spirit of ecstasy designed and plonked on top of the radiator of every single Rolls Royce. So from 1910 to today and forever, every Rolls Royce carries the spirit of ecstasy. But back to this car mascot itself. So it has been used for tens of thousands of miles. We know that because the auctioneers described it as being scuffed and dinged and chipped and banged. And yes, absolutely, that poor old falcon has seen an awful lot of heavy road use. His tail at some point has even been chipped off and glued on. But can you imagine this thing coming at you in the dead of night, glowing with electricity? It would be a phenomenal sight to witness before the thing ran you over. It is magnificent. Anybody interested in car-related memorabilia would go crazy over this thing. So, estimated at three to five hundred pounds, how much do you think it finally sold for? Well, get ready for a shock. 15 seconds thinking time, starting now. And I'm back. If you said final hammer price for the Lalique car mascot here was £1,700, or well, if you got anywhere near, then give yourself a point. And come on, you would if you could, wouldn't you? Well, ask yourself, why did this bird do so well? It was described as rough and ready, damaged, chipped and banged. But originality is very desirable. And this thing was all of that. And guess what? Car collectors, well, they love spending money. Anyway, that is the end of this episode. Do let me know how you did, make some comments, get in touch. And if you've got something interesting and tiki that's about to go into auction and you want me to feature it on a future show, then let me know. But until then, until next time, I'm David Harper. Cheerio.